cool. So the other equation we will use, just brought that one up, is Bernoulli's equation. So in Bernoulli's equation, it kind of looks at conservation of energy of the fluid that's flowing. So what's kinetic energy of a normal object? But, but what's the formula for it? One half mv squared, one half mv squared. So you guys learned that earlier this semester. Well, for a fluid now, flowing, we're going to look at one half times density times v squared instead as kind of being analogous to its kinetic energy. What's the gravitational potential energy of an object? So let's say an object I put way up here. What's its potential energy? What's the formula? MGH, mass times gravity times height. Well, in this case, instead of mass again, we're going to look at its, for fluid, flow times density times height. And in this case, height I'm going to call Y as some sort of vertical height. So, cool. What Bernoulli really said is that this lovely quantity of pressure plus the kinetic energy term plus the potential energy term of fluid that's flowing, this is a constant. And so again, if I'm in two parts of a pipe again, let's say, in some way, shape, or form, that would say that the pressure in area one, the kinetic energy term in area one, and the potential energy term in area one would equal the same summation in area two. Because again, this summation is constant anywhere inside that pipe. Or why can mass replace with density? Cool. So here, it's about water that's flowing, right? And so notice, am I talking about one molecule of water? Am I talking about five molecules of water? Am I talking about a whole kilogram of water? How much water am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about general water that's flowing, and so we scale it as, you know, the amount per meter cubed or something like that, the weight per meter cubed, the kilograms per meter cubed, which is density. And so it's about for every meter cubed of water that flows, well, that's 1,000 kilograms. And so it's scaled to some set volume of water as it goes through in that fashion. Cool, other questions? Cool. So ultimately, this Bernoulli's equation we can use in a, a couple of different ways. So let's say we look at this example back up here. The question is, is where is the pressure higher between these? Well, if we look, because the average height is the same, it's a straight tube, it's not angled down or angled up, the average height here is right down the middle. The average height here is also right down the middle. And so the average Y value is exactly the same. And so the amount of potential energy these guys have is the same. So these two terms essentially are going to cancel. There's no difference. Okay. Well, let's look at the kinetic energy term. So it's the same fluid all the way through, so the density is not different. So, but the velocity is different. Which of these had a greater velocity? A smaller opening. And since he's got a greater velocity, he's got a greater kinetic energy. So again, the potential energies are the same, but he's got a greater kinetic energy than he does. And so for these to be equal, who's got to have the higher pressure? Yeah, P1. So if he's got the higher kinetic energy, then he needs to have the higher pressure. That way, both sides are still equal. This is completely counterintuitive. So nine times out of 10, if I ask students which side has the higher pressure before ever introducing it, they're like, oh, right here, it's totally got the higher pressure. But it's not true. So it turns out water that's moving more slowly generally has a higher pressure than water that's moving more quickly. So I like to think of it as, Notice, once we put that nozzle on, this water's just flowing through this tube. And think about it as traffic control. So traffic control. So if people are walking through a big hallway, and then it narrows into a very small hallway, where's the bottleneck going to happen? On which side is the bottleneck? It's on this side. So, and that's just really an illustration. It doesn't really apply to reality in any way, shape, or form or anything, but it's just my way of remembering that the pressure's higher over here 
than it is over here. But it's really from Bernoulli's equation that will derive that. Cool. We can also use this to talk about why an airplane is allowed to fly. So an airplane is allowed to fly so because air passes over the wing and under the wing at different velocities. And because it's flowing at different velocities, we look at airflow as being fluid flow, and flowing at different velocities, it's going to create a difference in pressure that results in a lift force. What's pressure again? force per area. And so we see this pressure difference. And there's more pressure pushing up than is pushing down on that wing. And so you look at the area of that wing, that corresponds with a certain force pushing up on the wings of an airplane. And so we, we technically use Bernoulli's equation to kind of demonstrate that as well. All right, let's look at some examples here. So number nine, we're showing a pipe. So. And we're told that fluid is flowing through this pipe to the right from the illustration there. And it says if the radius of the larger end is three times the radius of the smaller end of the pipe, in which region of the pipe is the velocity of an ideal fluid undergoing laminar flow higher? And how much higher? Where is the pressure higher? So this is very similar to the conceptual example we talked about here. But now we're looking at some sort of mathematical calculation. So in this case. Which side's going to have the higher velocity? Let's just get that out of the way. Cool. Yeah, and let's call this region one, and we'll call this region two. And so where's the velocity higher? Region two, for sure. Now the question is, how much higher? Well, so again, it's all about area. And that's what makes this last question tricky, because I didn't give you areas. What did I give you? Info, information about the radius, but what's the area of a circuit? What's the cross sectional area of a circular tube? Pi r squared. And so, area in this case is pi r squared. And so, in this case, how many times greater is the area in region one than in region two? Oh, the radius is three, but the area, the radius gets what to get the area? Squared. So, if the radius is three times bigger, the area would be three squared times bigger, nine times bigger. Cool. And if you look at what ultimately our equation of continuity tells us, I don't know why I have another equal sign in there. So notice for these to be equal, region one has a larger area. For region one to have a larger area, it must have a smaller velocity. In this case, how many times bigger is the area? Nine times bigger. Then how many times less must be the velocity? Nine times less. That's exactly how that works. So, and we could do some plug-in and chug-in, some substitution and stuff like that. Notice, if I wanted to really do some substitution, so what do I really want to solve for here in this case? I want to know in which region of the pipe is the pressure higher and how much higher? Well, it's higher on which side? Which side? For the velocity? Oh, sorry, I'm going velocity, my bad. On which side is the velocity higher? Region two. And so I'm going to solve for V2 here in this case. If you rearrange this, V2 equals A1 V1 over A2. But again, if the radius is three times bigger in region one, then the area in region one is how many times bigger than re the area in region two? Nine times bigger. So instead of A1 here, I'm going to replace that. A1 is equal to nine times the area of region two. And so my areas in region two cancel. And I found out that, indeed, like we just said, the velocity in region two is nine times the velocity in region one. So again, region two is higher. And this tells me it's nine times higher. So if you can work it out in your head and be like, oh, area over here is nine times bigger, so velocity is nine times smaller, great. If you actually want to mathematically work it out and do a little substitution, awesome, either way. Cool. Which side had the higher pressure again? Yeah. He's got the higher pressure. He's got the slower moving fluid. We could reason it out with Bernoulli's equation just conceptually like we did the earlier example. All right. Let's look at number 10. So number 10. Number 10 is a conceptual problem. It's not a plug and chug. So I actually don't have a plug and chug for you to do with Bernoulli's. But we could. But it's really just more plug and chug. 
So here we've got water flowing. And the question is, is we got this defined as region number one, and this little area defined as region number two. And the question is, for an ideal fluid undergoing steady flow, in which region of the pipe is the pressure higher? Region one, region two, or you can't tell. There's not enough info to be able to tell. So totally just purely conceptual. And we're going to look at this in terms of Bernoulli's equation. So notice this is not quite as easy as the one we did here. So with the example we did originally, conceptually, why was this a little bit easier? Yeah, because the y's were the same. And so the potential energy terms were the same on both sides and just canceled. But that's not the case here. Now again, we don't have enough info to do any kind of mathematical calculation, but we can do some things. So let's look first and say, which region is going to have the higher velocity? Two. Two. And so in this case, this term over here is larger than the corresponding kinetic energy term on the other side. Okay. Which term, which region, region one or region two, is going to have the higher potential energy term? Two as well. So here, the potential energy term is also larger on this side as well. If we're going to have this equality here, then what must be true? Then pressure has got to be higher on this side. Or we could say that pressure has got to be lower on this side, however you want to look at it. So the only way, if these are both larger than their corresponding terms on the other side, the only way this could be equal is if the pressure on this side is lower than the pressure in region one. Cool. So just purely conceptual question. Kind of reasoning it out using Bernoulli's equation.